Ani Buju, Bidavan Dishna Kaz, Jijak Dodem, Nidom Nisang Donjaba. My name is Don Madavi Leach, and I'm so honored to be here. I'm uh, from the Crane Clan, from beautiful Manitoulin Island in Northern Ontario. I'm very honored to be on the lands of the Algonquin people here and uh, a traditional meeting place. And I know that uh, the elder has uh, left the room right now, but uh, I just wanted to thank her for that beautiful, heartfelt prayer. She's a good friend of mine too, and um, I know many of you probably don't, uh, don't realize, but next week she's receiving the Inspire Award, which is such a great honor. And I know she wouldn't speak of that herself, but uh, I think she's uh, an amazing uh, cultural leader, and we're so, uh, lucky to have her as a gift to us and you could feel the um, the message of love in that prayer that she provided. I also want to uh, say uh, uh, Adam Beach that uh, Reggie would love for you to play him in a movie. <laughs> and did you know that Adam can skate? <laughs> he knows how, how to play hockey so I think that would be a really great film to see. So I've been invited to, to speak about uh, the global environment, the global setting that we are part of today, and our work with our Indigenous brothers and sisters from other countries. First, I think it's important to say that our brothers and sisters from the other countries are watching what's going on in Canada today. and. Uh, I, I'm getting uh, messages from a lot of the uh, uh, people that I've made acquaintances with asking about this, wanting to know more about the background. And, um, but basically, uh, uh, they always look to Canada as a leader in, in terms of Indigenous relations and building uh, uh, and, and the supports that Indigenous people receive here in Canada. But even they recognize that uh, Reconciliation has undergone a tremendous setback in the, what's going on today. I know that uh, uh, looking at that, though, one of the other things, though, I always like to look for the positive, and what I see happening is the growing number of non-Indigenous people participating in these uh, events and supporting us. We know that there's a backlash as well, that's very heartbreaking, but I think the bigger picture is more people are learning about the issues in terms of our lands and what title means, indigenous title, about how we need to implement those um, court cases that we've won. We've won more than 200 court cases in the past 25 years that reaffirm our title. But it's just a matter of getting the, uh, the uh, governance straight on all of this. So it's important that, uh, you know, when we look at the core issues on this, it does relate to economic development. The core issue is the title to the lands. It's the indigenous rights to the land. It's in the indigenous say on what happens on the land. And it's all about our nationhood. You know, this is an opportunity for Indigenous people to take stock and to look at uh, implementing our traditional forms of nationhood that we had before. Sometimes we speak of uh, our First Nation communities, but that's different from our First Nation. I think I've mentioned this to people before about how I feel I, I'm a member of the Anishinaabek Nation. And I wish my uh, membership card said that, and so I would have mobility rights within my whole nation. I think the Okanagan Nation, the Mi'kmaq Nation, wouldn't that be nice to have your card with your nation? And you have the opportunity, though, to work in, live in, buy houses, buy businesses in our collective nations in those communities. That would increase, of course, the uh, real estate value of our First Nations, too, when we're talking about our housing initiative, if we could buy and, and sell homes in a, with a larger market within our nations. So I think that there's economic opportunities 
there if we work on establishing our nationhood. But whatever happens in Canada is, does set a, a precedent worldwide. People are really, really watching. Other countries uh, are definitely our Indigenous brothers and sisters. So for the most part over the past 25, 30 years, more, well longer than that, we, our people have been, our, our leaders have been working on getting recognition of um, human rights as well as land rights for Indigenous people. When you look at all the UN forums and all of the work being done internationally, it's always been on human rights and land rights, which is critical to us. But also now what's begun is work on our economic rights. Of course, part of the economic rights are, are, uh, are uh, referred to in the United Nations Decla Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. But uh, I think now it's up to us, the people in the room here, to uh, make sure that we're on this path to start realizing and uh, putting into effect the uh, economic rights that we have. We've always had these rights. We had economies here traditionally. And now what, what we need to do is, is work on that. And, and that work has started on things such as, uh, more, in, more recently, we've um, been working on an, uh, our, our economic rights through um, uh, a project that started two and a half years ago with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. And many of you probably working in the economic field understand that this organization, the OECD, it's one of the most respective economic organizations in the world when it comes to uh, research on economic development uh, and on putting policy recommendations together for the member states. I believe there's 137 members of uh, states of the, or countries of the OECD. So this organization brings in people from all around the world, uh, usually uh, people with PhDs and the and the uh, economists with PhDs, and they do a lot of research. Can, and they've been around since World War II. Can you imagine in all of that time, it was only in the past few months that they ever uh, published a report on indigenous economic development? First time in all those years. And uh, I'm glad that uh, Canada and the indigenous people here have been a part of that. There were other countries as well, like Australia and Sweden. But for the first time ever, it's, it's uh, our uh, people are involved in this, in our communities. We did case studies through this uh, research in remote parts of Canada, in urban areas, rural areas of Canada, communities located in, in those regions, and learned a lot from those case studies. And in this report um, that's been put together, and it was just released, it's um, uh, in Wendaki uh, about uh, two, three weeks ago, the Canadian report, there's an international report that talks about other, compares us to all other countries in, in, with indigenous populations, but there was a Canadian specific report that was released uh, just a few weeks ago here, based on our case studies. and. Um, that report actually has more than 57 recommendations on uh, policy recommendations for government, but there's also kind of recommendations that uh, Indigenous people can take and run with. And I'm, I'm a real proponent of not waiting for the government to do stuff for us. I, I think when you look at a lot of the things that have happened in Canada and the major uh, uh, progress that we've made, you look at those First Nations, you look at those well, other indigenous communities and indigenous people who have made progress, it's because they just took the bull by the horns themselves and did it. And, uh, but we, so you don't wait, don't wait for government. But in the meantime, there's a willingness on a lot of people within government to help. So work with those people too. And that's what this uh, report recommends because these reports are actually recommendations to the, the OECD member states. So they're the ones who have to take the report and run with it. But we're, as Indigenous people, going to try to make sure that wherever we can make 
some of those things happen, we, we will. So this, um, um, po the policy recommendations there are, are related to four main areas. Um, the one being uh, data governance and sovereignty. And what that means is just like in all of the work that we do, we always like to build business cases that show uh, that what we're trying to do is going to be feasible, that it has a chance of succeeding. We look at all of the markets and all the finances and, and everything. So when we, we need data to do all of that. So what we're finding is in Canada, there's been inconsistent uh, collection of data. There's an one-off report here from one year and another report there that uh, talks about a specific sector, but nothing collected on a regular basis. So one of the things that the OECD has recommended is that we need to have um, our own uh, way of ha collecting data. We used to have a First Nations Statistical Institute. It didn't last very long, and I know that Probably the timing wasn't right, because when you see the recommendations in this report, it has, is more specific. So we can have something like an Indigenous Statistical Institute in Canada that will collect data on a regular basis, and we'll own it. We'll say it, it would be owned by us. It's not a government. We don't see it as a government entity, but we could see the government supporting it. And I know um, Stats Can has said that they would support it as well, and not, not officially, but the people within there that we're working with, they like the idea and are willing to help. So I think we, we should look at that. We need to set up uh, something like that so we can start collecting data. The National Indigenous Economic Development Board, of which I'm a member, publishes a, 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 an economic progress report. But we, we always have a hard time collecting all the data that needs to be measured all the time. So if we had a, something like that, that could help with all of our business cases for whatever we do. For the programming that we have, having good data is really a, a, a mainstay of uh, the OECD programming. And so that wove its way into what we do because we found, in, even in other countries, it's a, it's a, a similar issue. We need to have good data to make good decisions, to make informed decisions. The other area in the report talks about land regimes. And in that report, for Canada, it, it notes that there's some unfinished business where communities have won, in court cases, Aboriginal title, but nobody's put in place the ways that we're going to exercise that. So that's part of what the, you know, one of the core issues I spoke about that we're dealing with today. You know, some of these court cases were won 20 years ago and no mechanisms ha have been put in place. The, uh, and it, this is something that we're supposed to be working with the governments on. We have ideas on how to do that. I think that's, if we started there, we could help address some of the issues that we're facing right now. Yep. The, uh, the other thing is, uh, uh, the other area in the report is under economic development and there's a lot of policies on what to do to support economic development for Indigenous people here in Canada. There's, uh, but mainly, um, there are policies for inclusion. One of the things that have always happened is policies that have been made for us, not involving us in the development of those policies that impact us and affect us. So those are the, some of the things that we want to work with and work on, you know, whether it's global affairs and, and trade, whether it's uh, fisheries and aquaculture, whether it's uh, resource development. We need to be involved in the development of those policies and engaged because they impact us too. All of these, whether it's water governance, management, everything affects us. So we need to be part of that, um, those discussions and the policies. And there's economic policies that we could bring valuable insight, input to that work. I really believe that our people have that capability to do so. We, we're at that level of sophistication now. As I, I look at all of the, my friends in the room here, I know that we can make those policy recommendations. The fourth area of that report, and there was just the four areas, was um, institutional and governance development. 
And when we look at institutional development, uh, a lot of other countries around the world feel that Canada's in the lead when it comes to having institutions already in place, like our uh, Aboriginal Financial Institution Network. That's the envy of all Indigenous people around the world, what we have here in Canada. There's no other place that has anything like what we have. And we have our central body with NACA uh, helping us and supporting us. We, it's a federal pro federally funded program. The supports are there. You know, we've seen the funding go right down over many years. But, you know, I think building that business case and this, the stat, uh, statistics that we need to put together will show, and from this report will show, that there's a need for that kind of institutional development in uh, helping to support the capacity. So we do have institutions, but we need more to make things happen. For example, I always like to share the one project that uh, I got to learn about being involved in this project. Uh, was uh, an, uh, It's an institution that Australia has in place. It's called Supply Nation. And Supply Nation there is a uh, indigenous business directory. But what's different about that, it's certified as an indigenous business directory. So you know when you have this directory that the real indigenous businesses own it, uh, owners, ownership. Sometimes there's, in Canada, there, has, there is an issue where some companies are saying they're indigenous businesses, but it's not really been verified as such, but having something like Supply Nation would help in terms of the fact that, uh, um, well, it, it helps there because they have a tenth of the number, number of businesses that, uh, indigenous businesses in Australia, but they make more than 12 times more uh, uh, money through go uh, government and corporate Australia procurement than we do with our 54,000 to 57,000 Indigenous businesses. There's something wrong with that picture. So having an entity like Supply Nation has had a huge impact in Australia in supporting Indigenous businesses. So one of the things that I would like to see here is that we establish a Supply Nation Canada. In fact, I'd like to see a Supply Nation Chile, a Supply Nation New Zealand, Supply Nation Sweden, because I think having that kind of an international brand would allow international companies or any company anywhere in the world to find a certified indigenous business for uh, procurement purposes. And in Canada, we know now that there's a target for government procurement of 5%, but it's really hard for the government even to uh, help or to implement or to reach that uh, target when they don't have a formal business directory of certified indigenous businesses. There's different ones, like Wabatech has a uh, business directory, some of the other AFIs have business directories, I think the Canadian Council for Aboriginal Businesses has one, but they're all over the place. There's no one directory certified that we need. So when I think about institutional development, that's one thing that would really, really help our indigenous businesses. So I'm hoping to see that that becomes a rea reality. I also wanted to mention that as part of that work with OECD, we're looking at establishing a permanent mechanism. And I want to thank, um, I don't know if he's still in the room, Shannon Matatawabin, yeah, he's there. But Shannon has, uh, he's accompanied me in, in the, at, the, at the last meeting at OECD and was really, really helpful in helping to set up the parameters of a new permanent mechanism at the OECD, which was adopted there because of our presentations to all, it's like the UN there with all the different countries. They uh, support the idea of a permanent mechanism to have an indigenous lens, an indigenous input and perspectives in all of the research that they do from here going forward. Now that's a huge step that an international organization is taking to have that indigenous lens. And uh, yeah, I really, I want to thank Shannon for that. So 
Having this, uh, uh, we're still coming up with the names for it, but I, uh, International Forum for Indigenous Prosperity, I think we're looking at. I think that that's an important thing. And another great thing that happened recently was uh, um, there was an agreement signed between Australia and Canada to establish an economic council to start working together, collaborating more. So part of it will be through the OECD format, format or forum that we're talking about. But there's a willingness, starting with two countries, and then I could see that expanding as we go forward or having separate agreements with our brothers and sisters in New Zealand and uh, the Nordic countries and Chile, uh, South, uh, all the South American countries. I see us doing that as well because you know, they always thought that Canada's ahead, but they're ahead of us in so many other respects and we can learn so much from our brothers and sisters from the other countries. We also have, of course, that we never had bef before until in the recent years is the International Indigenous Trade Organization. So they're helping indigenous businesses to reach international markets now and to work in, uh, with our American partners on um, trade-free zones which is really something, maybe this is something we can do in Canada as well. So there's all of these um, things that are happening. And oh, I, just one more uh, initiative that I, or two more I'd like to just briefly speak about. One is the Center of Excellence on Indigenous Minerals Development, which is going to be an international uh, service, a clearinghouse of leading practices for Indigenous people on mining initiatives. They'll have case studies and research. It's just new, it's just starting up now. But it's, it, the Center of Excellence is working with uh, universities in Canada, Australia, and um, we're looking at other parts of the world too to um, look at leading practices or learning from the ones that aren't working so well. But I think this is gonna help Indigenous people make informed decisions about resource development. That's the main reason that that center will exist, to help our people make informed decisions. So those are the kinds of things that we're looking at. And with all of the global perspective going on, um, the other thing that, that we're doing, and I talked about we need to do things ourselves, is uh, um, the National Indigenous Economic Development Board is getting together with all of the other indigenous, um, national indigenous organizations and some, and some of the regional organizations to develop a national indigenous economic strategy for Canada. We're gonna, the indigenous people are gonna hold the pen in developing that strategy together. We have the capacity to do it. We have the smarts to do it. We have the people capable to do this ourselves and present it to the government of Canada, to the provinces and regions. This is, people are always asking indigenous people, well, what do you want? They don't understand. You can see that in some of the recent press. Well, we'll, we'll let them know. We'll be specific and we'll have good data to back up our strategy going forward. But we want to set those priorities and let people know and we want to take into account some of these global and national, like the national, international uh, initiatives that are taking place and take those into this uh, strategy and help uh, work together to build strong economies for Indigenous people in Canada. So that's the path forward, working together, the communication that is needed to work together to build those partnerships. Um, maybe look at a reset of reconciliation down the road. But the good thing about this is a path that we can all walk together uh, hand in hand to make a real difference in this country, to better engage our people in the economy, uh, which is where our rightful place is. So I want to say miigwech to all of my dear friends here for allowing me to share this information with you all today. Miigwech.